Welcome to Benefest IS and you are watching Karan Jodh. These are the crispest current affairs that you can get. Uh, we are running the environmental series now. Under this already we have covered four videos. This is the fifth video in which we will be covering few of the topics associated with pollution and climate change. As you can see the topic list, we are dealing with a uh, few of the indices and uh, report. First one is climate change performance index, then uh, the future of the earth report, then household air pollution, heavy metal contamination and plastic rust. And also we will be discussing with um, uh, endosulfan and a few of the processing technologies like polycrack, lotus HR and also we will be discussing with the less polluting firecrackers or the green firecrackers. And uh, as part of this uh, initiative we are giving uh, three different features for this program. One uh, you will get the timestamp in the comment section you can go to a particular topic and see and also we will be providing you with the PPTs which you can uh, store and you can uh, read them and revise them well. Then uh, we will be discussing uh, the questions. We will be giving two questions after each video and uh, we will be discussing uh, them at the end of each chunk. So subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update. So let us go to topic by topic. The first topic is the climate change performance index. And this is the indicator of the uh, nations uh, about their climate uh, change um, uh, uh, action plans or the steps they have taken to curb the uh, climate change. So it is developed by uh, two of important uh, private agencies like German Watch and uh, New Climate Institute. As we have seen uh, yesterday, uh, also the Climate Action Network will help to um, <coughs> uh, release this particular index and it is uh, released annually since 2005 and it has four categories for the assessment. Those categories are the greenhouse gas emissions, 40% uh, weightage is given to these emissions, then the renewable energy. So how much renewable energy that the country is using uh, right now that will get the 20% weightage and the energy use that is uh, the presently like how much energy or the per capita energy that the country is consuming. So that is also counted or evaluated here. Then finally the policy matters that is the climate change policy what we have in the country. So that also matters for this one and the weightage is given around 20% and it uh, aims to enhance the transparency in the uh, international politics or the international climate politics. As you have seen uh, post Paris agreement there are uh, many uh, politics going around for example um, the US taking itself back or withdrawing from the Paris Agreement and uh, the repercussions what we have seen from Canada and Russia. So these uh, matter a lot. So that is why the climate policy also got around 20% of the weightage. Then in this one India is doing better and it is ranked at 10th position right now. Last year it was a uh, ninth position. Mainly the India's uh, performance it is linked to uh, the importance that it is giving for the renewable energy sources. Uh, basically, uh, our INDC, that is the uh, inter, uh, uh, that is the national uh, um, determined contributions towards the Paris Agreement. So, it has main component of the renewable energy that we are going to cut the use of fossil fuel uh, by a certain percentage in the future. That is what is promised and um, committed also. So, that is why India is ranked around. 10th and uh, one more uh, important index that we have to see uh, which is prepared by German watch that is uh, global climate risk index. So it uh, uh, marks the countries according to their vulnerabilities with respect to climate change. It is not about the actions they have taken it is about the vulnerability that they have. So climate change performance index it is about the assessment of their performance and uh, the climate uh, risk index it is up to the vulnerability that those countries have. And India is placed at uh, fifth position uh, right now in this one and uh, it is uh, headed by Japan that is the first country is uh, Japan. The most vulnerable country is Japan in this one. The next important report what we have to discuss is the future of the earth uh, report and uh, this report is uh, prepared by a few of the uh, private agencies and one of the India's uh, uh, agency is also contributing uh, to this particular report. So that is uh, Indian Institute of Science. So this is uh, prepared by 
the future earth uh, regional office that is the south asian uh, regional office and one more um, uh, private agency called divecha center for climate change and also india's um, indian institute of science is also contributing to release the uh, report and it aims to reduce the carbon footprint uh, and halting the global warming and whatever the aim that we have either 1.5 degree or 2 degree centigrade um, uh, increase in the average temperature uh, from the industrial revolution levels so we are trying to contain it to 2 degree centigrade by 2050 that is the ambitious goal that we have and the five global risks are identified in this particular uh, report so one is the failure of our climate action plans or the um, climate change mitigation and adaptation so whatever that we have promised country wise so that sounds very ambitiously but if it is going to fail, it is going to fail uh, very badly and it will be having the highest risk. Then the future will be unknown. So that is why the failure of the climate change mitigation plans has been uh, raised by this particular uh, uh, report. And the extreme weather events, whatever that we are witnessing right now, maybe it is the bitter colds or the warmest um, uh, uh, summers or the erratic way of rainfall what we are experiencing right now so even they are being watched by this report and the major biodiversity loss yes if you look at the biodiversity percentages they are being uh, reduced and also the ecosystem collapse we are uh, uh, putting many animals and the birds into the danger zone or we are making them as the threatened uh, species so that is also watched by this report and the food crisis yes this is one of the major uh, impact that we are seeing as far as the food security is concerned so food crisis especially in the asian and african countries yes this is at the alarming rate then with respect to water crisis especially in the dry regions or the tropical regions or in the deserted areas we are seeing the water crisis especially if you look at the indian condition with respect to drought and famine so it is uh, increasing uh, year by year with respect to the area coverage and also the uh, population uh, 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 what it is affecting so far so these are the major risks that are being reported by the future of the earth report the next topic is about one of the important pollutions which is uh, uh, not talked uh, too much and we concentrate on the outside um, air pollution that is through the industries and the vehicles but this household air pollution so this is one of the major threat what india or other countries are facing and it has to be discussed other types of pollutions they have been discussed and this household air pollution this is caused by the open fires or the traditional ways of cooking what we have that is through the simple stores or by burning the uh, biomass maybe it is wood animal dung or the crop waste so this causes the highest um, uh, uh, household air pollutions or the indoor air pollutions and even the burning of the coal so that also causes the household air pollution these are the main ingredients of the um, pollutants then uh, these are the major uh, uh, <coughs> reasons for the causing of uh, the diseases like non-communicable diseases especially the stroke coronary heart disease coronary heart disease this is the narrowing of the arteries so the blood that is going out of the um, heart towards the uh, lungs so that uh, channel or those arteries are being narrowed and this is called as coronary heart disease and the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease this is the narrowing of the uh, alveolar uh, uh, tract so basically the uh, heaviness in the heart or the breathing problem are associated uh, with this COPD or the chronic obstructive uh, pulmonary disease and also the lung cancer because of the chronic uh, effect of these things even the cancers or the esophagus will get uh, lungs or the esophagus will get uh, affected and whatever the deaths we are seeing in the U U5MR that is the under 5 um, mortality rate that is the children's uh, death so it is mainly due to the pneumonia caused by the particulate matter especially the soot that is inhaled from the household air pollution so that is the major uh, uh, threat or that is the major cause uh, for the death of under five children 
and there is also evidence that are linked to some of the uh, uh, some of the malfunctioning or some of the diseases uh, like low birth weight yes it is associated with the household air pollution and tuberculosis the chronic tuberculosis and the cataract that is the eye uh, disease uh, and also some of the cancers like the nasopharyngeal and laryngeal nasopharyngeal it is uh, near the cavity of um, uh, nasal or it is uh, in the epiglottis region epiglottic region where the food pipe and the wind pipe join together that region and the laryngeal cancer laryngeal that is associated with the wind pipe so these are the major threats due to the household air pollution the next uh, important pollution that we need to talk uh, that is the heavy metal contamination uh, these days this heavy metal contamination is there in the news uh, it is with respect to the underground uh, contamination or the soil contamination so uh, as far as uh, the heavy metals definition is concerned it is not uh, very much evolved but the uh, metals having the higher mass compared to their volumes uh, so that we take at uh, heavy metals especially the uh, metals which are having the high, higher atomic numbers from iron including iron we take them as uh, heavy metal contamination and uh, in India major rivers are being affected by the heavy metal contamination and uh, uh, they are exceeding the safety limits and the Bureau of Indian Standards that is uh, BIS so it uh, takes care of checking these uh, water uh, qualities the survey uh, with respect to heavy metal contamination was uh, restricted to the surface water only underground uh, is not being tested only case to case basis the underground testing is done the survey uh, for heavy metal contamination is done for the surface waters that is the rivers in that we have found few of the things iron is the most contaminant or the most common contaminant in most of the water samples that have been taken from the rivers then the other major contaminants are like lead nickel chromium and cadmium and uh, copper so these are the other uh, contaminants next to iron so these are having uh, very bad effects on the health of the human beings and uh, among these uh, elements we need to identify the toxic though some of the heavy metals uh, uh, are there in this list but they are not being toxic so when we look at the toxic materials basically we look at the arsenic and the zinc in the previous uh, videos we have covered the arsenic pollution and arsenic and zinc so basically they are the toxic metals uh, whose uh, concentration uh, beyond limits will uh, uh, prove to be very fatal so uh, as far as the indian rivers contamination is concerned the arsenic and the zinc contamination is within the limits but when it comes to the underground uh, contamination especially uh, in the areas of west bengal jharkhand bihar and chhattisgarh the arsenic impurities is beyond uh, the uh, safe levels so that is the major worry but we are concentrating on the surface water here so sources of the heavy metal pollutions are mainly the uh, activities like mining milling plating and the surface finishing industries basically these are the metal industries or the industries where these metals are used regularly uh, so these are the main sources of the contamination though uh, the other processes like uh, agriculture so they contribute but not to the level that the industries are contributing then the impacts the health impacts are the physical muscular and the neurological de degenerative processes will take place and the diseases like alzheimer's and the parkinson diseases which are associated with the neural activity so they uh, are caused and the muscular dystrophy or the multiple sclerosis this is with respect to eye and the muscle degeneration will happen in this case so sclerosis so basically it is associated with the eyes and muscular dystrophy this is with respect to the muscular degeneration what we can see so heavy metal contamination so along with this we have to understand few of the heavy metals and the definition is not uh, 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 much evolved so we have to consider few of the heavy metals above iron so as the heavy metals the next one is the plastic crust plastic crust this is uh, seen in uh, some of the beaches or especially in the beaches of spain uh, uh, 
uh, this is uh, observed uh, not uh, near Spain. Uh, uh, I beg your pardon. So it is the Portugal. It is not the Spain. So this is the plastic crust um, uh, uh, encrusted on the rocks. So there will be a kind of um, um, the homogeneous uh, uh, layer over the rocks. So this is the inseparable layer that we find it on the rocks. And it is uh, found in Portugal first. Initially, three years back, it was noticed uh, as a small event. But uh, after three years, it has been uh, seen as a major threat for the species which are there on the shores of these uh, uh, oceans or the beaches. Then the patches look like the blotches and the melted plastic. It is kind of a layer, homogeneous layer, what I have told. So it gets adhered to the rocks and the species which are depending or which are living in those areas or which have made the rocks as their habitats, they are being affected by this one. And how we see the layers of lesions or the algae on the rocks, similarly this plastic rust is being observed. And the chemical analysis of those layers have been proved to be uh, the polyethylene. Polyethylene, this is the uh, most used single used plastic and in India we have very strict regulations for the usage of the single use plastic. So we are seeing um, the plastic which is getting ingrained into the ecosystems. So that is very bad indicator for the sustenance of the animals or the species on the face of the earth. Then it is different from the plastic rock conglomerates. Plastic rock conglomerates, these are kind of a, uh, uh, aggregations of the plastic waste what we find. These are not gone to the uh, very thin layer, but these can be separated from the rocks. So these are not to be misunderstood with the plastic rock conglomerates. They are different. So uh, the plastic crust, it is basically replacing the natural crust or the films as i have told uh, it is uh, replacing the films of the algae or the uh, lesions which get other to the rocks so basically they are uh, uh, replacing uh, that one and it is causing a lot of uh, illusion or a lot of uh, inconvenience for the uh, <coughs> species which live on the beaches the next important uh, uh, pollutant that we have to talk it is about the endosulfan Endosulfan, yes, it is completely banned in India. Either the production or its usage is completely banned in India since 2011. So it is widely banned pesticide and it is basically sprayed on the crops like cotton, cashew, fruits. Most of the uh, commercial crops are um, uh, sprayed with endosulfan for the control of the pests. And the pests which are being controlled are like white flies, aphids, beetles and the worms. Uh, these are the uh, pests which are controlled by the endosulfan. And major threats that the endosulfan has is uh, it will uh, delay the reproductive development. So it is associated with the reproductive cycle and it will cause uh, some of the effects associated with uh, reproduction. Autism, then the bioaccumulation, this bioaccumulation we have discussed earlier, then the endocrine disruption. Endocrine system, it is the uh, system of hormones. So that is being uh, disrupted by endosulfan and also neurotoxicity. So the nerve cells are being uh, affected by this endosulfan. The endosulfan usage is banned under the Stockholm Convention also. The Stockholm Convention, uh, to remind you, it is for the persistent organic pollutants or the POPs. So Stockholm Convention has completely banned this one, but a uh, few of the countries use it uh, uh, in their uh, countries, especially as the pesticide. And we have heard of the Kazargod disaster. In Kasargod, the plantations like cashew plantations were being sprayed by the endosulfan, but the ecosystem there, including the human beings and the animals, depending upon um, the cashew plantations, they were severely affected by this endosulfan. And uh, once it was uh, confirmed that the endosulfan was the culprit for major uh, uh, disaster, then uh, it was completely banned by the Supreme Court. And Supreme Court in 2011, it banned the production and distribution and even the usage of the endosulfan. 
next uh, important topic is the um, processing technology or from this slide we will be discussing with uh, uh, the technology that is uh, used uh, in the process especially in the waste to energy or energy from the waste so uh, this is the uh, very efficient uh, process or the technology what we have and this is a patented technology this patented technology first of its kind is used in indian railways and already we have around four such uh, plants in india and how does it work it uses the catalytic process catalytic process basically the enzymes um, are being used or uh, the polycrack here the chemical process is through the breaking down of the complex molecules of the um, uh, waste material and that will be converted into the uh, uh, smaller or the finer material and basically here the end product what we use so that will be of um, the economic use especially the hydrocarbon liquid fuels we get and also gas and carbon and water as the uh, byproducts that we get so these uh, hydrocarbon liquid fuels can be used for the lighting or for some uh, energy purpose then the uh, materials or the waste which all can be processed by polycrack technology so plastic petroleum sludge unsegregated uh, municipal, municipal solid waste e-waste automobile almost all the uh, types of waste we can uh, use here even including the new waste and for the remunerative purpose even the chatter of fruit or the palm bunch these are used as the uh, biofuels in the first generation so even that can be used to create the energy or to produce the energy so this is a very efficient um, plant what we have and it carries a closed loop system what do you understand by the closed loop system whatever the energy that is being produced by this uh, particular uh, plant that is being reused for the uh, process only so definitely some of the electricity or the motor usage is needed uh, in this particular plant so that is being um, uh, utilized uh, from the energy that has been created and the pollutants what we uh, release to the atmosphere it is almost zero then it will produce light diesel oil as i told the uh, hydrocarbon liquid fuel so light diesel oil so this is the main product out of this and the pre-segregation of the a waste is not required so this is the main feature because the segregation um, is a behavioral problem what we have in india even if you ask the people to segregate the dry and the wet waste or even the biomedical waste they don't do it so um, the technology is uh, uh, in such a manner that the pre-segregation is not at all required for this just the dumping of this waste is enough then the waste once it is put in the uh, plant so it can be processed within 24 hours so this is how the efficiency is uh, proved so basically with respect to the waste what we are using almost all the waste and the pre-segregation is not required and also the processing will happen within 24 hours so such plants have to be promoted in india uh, or they have to come to all the uh, city levels especially for the municipal solid waste management then it is fully automated system so very less uh, uh, human laborers are being used in this one uh, so definitely it is the uh, technology which we need to adopt in the future so right now we have four such machines in india and uh, in the later stage we are going to have uh, more number of these and uh, the initial investment it is uh, to the tunes of uh, 1.7 crores but um, uh, the annual uh, 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 annual revenue that we can generate from this is around 10% uh, of the initial investment. So this is going to be very efficient method in the um, near future as far as the waste management in India is concerned. The next important program uh, it is the Lotus HR program. This Lotus HR program it is into the water treatment especially the waste water treatment and uh, India through Ministry of uh, Science and Technology is taking part in this program proactively and the uh, 
uh, expansion of this Lotus HR is the local treatment of urban sewage and streams for healthy reuse and uh, already this is in place since the last 2-3 years and uh, we are at the experimental stage right now and it is being promoted by Ministry of Science and Technology uh, in collaboration with the government of Denmark. The scientists from both the countries are associated uh, in this particular program. If it is uh, proved to be very efficient then it can be easily uh, replicated and uh, scaled in the future. So it is the holistic wastewater management what we have and we are trying it at one uh, site particularly in uh, Delhi that is uh, uh, near the Barapulla drain system. This is uh, on the river Yamuna and this is the most polluted drain systems what we have and the water from there is being collected and that is being uh, put under test and most of the processing is happening on the site and if it is uh, very successful and efficient we are definitely going to replicate it in the other uh, streams also so uh, we are looking forward for uh, this particular uh, program and it will help uh, to get our rivers cleaned or our drainage for the streams cleaned so here the uh, Lotus HR program, it is uh, trying to bring up the solution which can be adopted across the world. So it is with respect to universal water management and risk assessment strategy uh, which are, is uh, going to be applicable in most of the mega cities around the world. So definitely we are looking forward for such a novel program. The last topic uh, of this video, it is with respect to green firecrackers. So after the uh, incident of uh, the Kerala uh, firecracker tragedy in the year uh, 2016, since then we are trying to uh, uh, either ban uh, the chemicals which are uh, being used in the firecrackers or we are going for the regulated use or simply we are going for the green firecrackers. Though it was uh, banned in India but uh, we could see some of the usage or some of the uh, illegal production and uh, illegal supply and also some of the sm uh, smuggling of these had happened and uh, the phenomena of bursting these crackers during the festivals of India that was seen. So that is why the uh, CSIR has come forward and it is uh, working upon the uh, production of the green firecrackers. So these crackers will be having a small shell size compared to the traditional crackers they will be having a small shell size and the chemical that has that are being used they will be safe so the raw materials that we are using they are less harmful raw materials and they don't use any kind of the banned chemicals and uh, those banned chemicals so far what we have seen they are lithium arsenic barium and lead these are not being used in these particular crackers and most of the the firecrackers they release the water vapor why water vapor because the dust that is being uh, suspended in the uh, atmosphere due to the bursting of the crackers so that has to be mitigated or that has to be controlled so these water vapors will help those dust particles to settle down and uh, uh, as per our study the 30 percent of uh, uh, particulate matter are being controlled with this particular water vapor uh, content then the CSIR has uh, uh, signed the agreements with the companies uh, to produce these green firecrackers. 230 companies have come forward to produce the green firecrackers. And the type of firecrackers what we have. So one is WASP that is a safe water releaser. So basically this will be containing the water vapor which will allow the dust to settle down. Then the next one is the safe thermite cracker. So this will be producing less heat compared to the traditional crackers what we have. So these are called as star crackers. Then the safe minimal aluminium. So aluminium which is used in this particular this thing, it is to the bare minimum level and this is called as the suffle. So these are the three types of fire crackers what we have. So far we have done with uh, most of the topics associated with the uh, conferences indices, reports, uh, then uh, the uh, <clears throat> topics associated with climate change and pollutions have been covered. In the forthcoming videos, we will be 
covering some of the uh, topics associated with forest and the biodiversity. So until then, uh, read well, revise well and practice the paper well. Thank you very much. Thank you.